So good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Gao Xiang, or you can call me Eric. I'm currently working as a full stack engineer at a startup called Deep Labs. So today, basically, sorry. Uh, basically, after hearing the last uh, last month's meetup talks, I come out with an idea of talking about API gateways because previously I was working uh, relate to API proxies and API gateways, and also because the API gateway is in the context of microservices, I will also talk about uh, some background on the microservices as well. So here is the agenda of the today's talk. Uh, first of all, I will talk about the software architecture history from the uh, Mononic app into the microservice app. And then I will talk two of the uh, common terms used in the API uh, gate, uh, sorry, the API gateway world, which is API proxy and the API gateway. And then as a standard of every presentation, I will talk about some pros and cons of the API gateways. At last, there are uh, a lot of open source implementations. I will pick one of them as a demo. And in the end, there is some conclusion and future work. So in the 90s, uh, basically every uh, application is just uh, one single app, and the developers only need to know one language or one frameworks. So we are living a happy life. Until the day that the microservice uh, architecture come out, so now we need to learn more and more new languages and new uh, frameworks because it's macro architecture. So the idea of macro architecture is to split the single application into multiple sub self-contained services and they communicate with each other through APIs. And as we are living in the age of REST, most of them are REST APIs. So here is the background of the soft software architecture involvement. And everything went well when you are developing the individual uh, services but there will be a problem when you integrate, I mean, from the client to see the whole Microsoft, uh, microservices app. So for example, if we are building this Amazon uh, mobile application, uh, which has two sets, one is the back end, one is the front end, mobile end. The front end sees the back end as a messy API world because we have so many uh, microservice uh, modules and for example, if we want to make an API <coughs> to gather some information about user account or product, we don't know which module we should call. Or if, for example, we know uh, in order to, uh, to call the module, we need to remember all the IP address of all the some modules. And what if one of the modules doesn't um, provide a web-friendly API, like for example, it's RPC API or rather than the uh, normal J uh, REST API, and even though we have figured all this out, we may still uh, face the problem we need to make tons of calls for just one page of the mobile application because there are so many microservices. So how do we solve this? The single solution is the API gateway. Before we uh, touch more on uh, what is API gateway, there are two terms actually being used. The first one is called API proxies which um, in general term uh, e exists in a uh, long time already. As we all know, we have uh, NJX proxies or Apache as a proxy. So basically the idea of proxy is to pointing, you already have one API at your backend. You, point, uh, you, you will point to that API and the client will uh, request your proxy and then um, the proxy will do some uh, request protocol translation if needed. And as a proxy, you can also add some uh, features like security and monitoring. So this is the standard proxy. For the API, it's more involved because uh, it can do more than one mapping because in the microservice world, you have more than one APIs. Sometimes you want to aggregate multiple API to create a new API. So uh, beside that, um, the API gateway can consider as multiple uh, API proxies. 
so in, in that sense, because it's acting as a router, you can add more uh, services like orchestration and authentication. So this, uh, both of these are in the API Gateway world. So the key idea of API Gateway is mapping. So mapping the user-facing API to your uh, backend APIs. It can be one-to-one -one mapping, it can be one-to-many mapping. Uh, most of them are static. That means at the time of the application is running, you already specify the mappings. And then there are a lot of benefits of using the API gateway. First of all, if you look at the uh, picture, basically Netflix tried to use the API gateway to reduce the number of front trips from nine to one. Just imagine that your client is a mobile application sitting at another <coughs> end of the world, then this will be a good performance improvement. Besides that, um, for your clients, they always uh, want something that's really fancy. They don't want to deal with your complicated uh, API, uh, complicated microservice API world. So you just need to provide them one sing, uh, single um, API entry point, and then you can customize for each of the uh, customers you have. And at last, uh, as I mentioned in the uh, definition, that because your API gateway is sitting between your uh, application and your clients, it, it actually can do a lot of things like the monitoring and authentication, adding at this level. But there is also some drawbacks. First of all, originally your, um, your work is once you finish your microservice API, you are done. But now because you have the API gateway, you need to expose your microservice API to your end user. So there is a possible risk of development bottleneck for within the API uh, gateway development. But we can easily solve this by um, making adding or exposing the new API much, much easier. So later I will show one of, one of the example how the open source um, to help you to do it in an easier way, just making one REST call. And this is the part that uh, from my personal uh, experience that uh, if you're doing a API gateway in a microservice, a lot of time you will create uh, having a risk to create a distributed transaction, which means in this case you have actually three servers. Uh, server one will acting as uh, API gateway. Two and three are your microservices. So if the user want to create a um, transaction such that uh, it performs some action on two first and then on three, so the problem will be what if your action on server two is success, but your action on server three is not success. Your whole system will be in a inconsistent state. Therefore, it's a distributed uh, transaction problem. But we can, all, um, for best practice, I will suggest that we always avoid um, write related uh, API aggregation. So if you want to merge multiple API together, you always use the read only APIs. And to solve, if you really need such kind of uh, operations, you, you may try to solve it by using um, some kind of uh, global queues to, for, the consi uh, for the eventually consistency. So as so far, we have seen the pros and cons of the API gateways. But it still seems that we are OK to go through with it. So these are the possible open source applications. The most famous one will be the uh, cone from the Marship, which is written in uh, uh, Lua. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, the, the key idea is that it has three components inside. The first one is um, your API. The second one is your uh, consumer. The last one is a plugin. So as long as you have created an API, create a consumer, you can apply plugins on the um, API and consumers. Later, I will do a short demo about this. And all other, there are a lot of other open source tools as well. And if you're using uh, some specific platforms like Amazon uh, and others, you, of course, you need to deal with the Amazon API uh, gateways. So maybe a short demo on the cool.
So basically, I have created uh, several uh, Docker containers. If you check the here, uh, the first one is the Kong database. Second one is a Python server, which acting as our uh, microservice API. We only have one API in this case. And then the, the Kong uh, server itself, there is also a Kong UI. So the idea is once we create the server, this might take some time because the starting up of the Docker container will take some time. So the demo here, what we want to achieve is uh, add, adding a new uh, API into the Kong server and uh, apply a key authentication so that if you don't have the key, you cannot access the API. OK, it's still starting up. But as a start, we can try to uh, call this. This is the microservice API from the Python server, which actually, when you uh, add the record, you will receive the you will save the record into uh, memory, and then we can access it. So here is the readout. Hello, and then. <coughs> At the first, if we call from the API gateways, you will not have a connection because you haven't added the, uh, the API into your API gateways. So the f format to add the API is to call this REST API. Still getting up. Finally, it's up. Sorry for taking so long. So now you have created your API gateways. Now you can access it. By calling from, if you notice in the URL, we are actually calling from localhost 8000, which is not the Python uh, server API. So you get the same results. And if you check from the <coughs> the Kong UI, okay. This is the API we have created, and we can add a, add a plugin to it. So for example, we add this uh, key authentication API. And once we have this, if we try to access it again, you will be unauthorized. So this is the basic idea of how the Kong API gateway works. And as a conclusion that uh, my talk mainly talks about what is an API gateway and how you can use an open source implementation to uh, make your life easier to manage APIs in your microservices. And in the future, I think there are a lot of things need to be done. Like for example, um, most of the API gateways currently don't have self so, uh, API discovery, and um, there is no dynamic API mappings, or you can, um, there's no UI for you to uh, 
to merge multiple API together to create a new API. So this may be some of the things future will come. And uh, sorry, you're talking about open source solutions, right? Yep. In the context of open source solutions. Yeah. Because I don't have access to closed source, right? <laughs> Yeah, so this is a reading list if you want to find out more. And that's all about my talk. Have you run Kong in production? Sorry? Have you run Kong in production? No. That's fine. It would be nice to see some production. Yeah, so that's all. Any questions? I think Kong is being used in production by the company who made it, Maship. Okay. It's like an API marketplace for. The Maship is self using the Kong, but. For me, I don't Yeah, I, I saw Kong, I think the back end is in this, made up of like NGX, like one part of this NGX. And then I think the, just now I saw the database, I think mm -hmm. that's like a state, mm -hmm. so using Cassandra. So yeah. it's actually like a mixture of all, a lot of open source I mean, components yeah. and that's for long range, of course. What's for long range? I think uh, it's, if Ura, it's open source, we can do what we want. Yeah. Ura, LUA. Who won? It's, it's, a a a yeah. it's usually used for oh, games. Wow. <laughs> okay.